Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. That's right, I'm on a roll. Another video. So for today, I am using Altenew's Wallpaper Art Stamp Set and also the Altenew watercolors that I've had forever and haven't really played with a whole lot. And we are using Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, which is the watercolor paper I use usually. Um, I have archival ink here from Wendy Vecchi in potting soil. I really like this brown. I decided it would be fun to use something that wasn't black for a change. So I'm just going to stamp all these out onto my watercolor paper here. I am only showing you guys one of everything in this video. So I'm only showing you stamping one of the images, as well as I'm going to show you guys the steps I used to do like one of the flowers at a time, um, instead of showing you all three and just repeating the process. So I'm starting off by adding a light wash of the lemon fresh watercolor from the Altenew watercolors. I have not used these watercolors a ton. I have found that I have an issue. When I think I don't have a lot of something, I'm afraid to use it and I need to get over it. And that's why I'm using them in this video. Every time I open these, I'm like, but what if I run out of a color? Oh my goodness. It's yeah, I'm terrible. So <laughs> I'm hoping to get a bunch more use out of a lot of the products in my stash. And especially since I've been really focusing on doing some videos and things of that nature for you guys. So once we're done that, I did mix some of the cotton candy with that lemon fresh, just to give that pink a little bit of an orange orangey like yellowy undertone to it warm it up just a little bit and I'm starting by dropping those into where the shadows would be and blending them out with clean clear water so that's the process through all of this through all of the layers I'm going to put on these flowers I am just going and I'm tucking that color in where it would be shadowed from the petals on top of it or where it's at a pinch point and things of that nature blending it out with clean clear water and carrying on like that so I'm going to do that process for all of the flowers as well as the leaves. We're gonna come into the leaves with the frayed leaf. And I mixed a little bit of the forest glades in with that, just to give it a little bit of a darker tone. And again, I'm dropping that in at the bottom point, the pinch point of the leaf and blending that out with clean, clear water. So like I said, I haven't used these a whole ton since I swatched them. I did a little play with them when I got them and then I left them because I'm terrible. So I'm super pumped to be using them. I can't wait to play with some more of the colors, that grapevine, the cosmic berry. And I really enjoy the color selection in this watercolor palette. So I'm definitely going to be playing with it a lot more. I did mix up a little bit more of this pink color, a little bit less yellow, a lot more of the cotton candy to make it a little bit of a darker pink. And we're just following that same process again. Now what I did here is I did the first flower and the second flower or no, the first flower and that. Now I'm showing you this one. So I'm going to show you on different flowers as we go along that I have stamped here, but it's the same process on each one. I just figured doing it this way stops you guys from listening to me repeat myself 40 million times. We'll only do it 20 million times. <laughs> and it also stops this video from literally being like 40 minutes long. Being able to do this and have it sped up to like four times the original speed has let me squeeze it into like, I think it's about 11 minutes or something like that, as opposed to it being 40 minutes long. So I added a little bit of the bamboo into that green to yellow it up. And that's what I did there. And now I have um, some of the coral berry, cotton candy, and the lemon fresh mixed up here, just to give me a little bit of a darker tone of a ready pink color once I blend it out. And oh, and I added brown to that. I'm sorry, I added mocha to that as well and just mixed them up and I swatched them. <laughs> you can see the different, slight different tones of color up at the top between those two flowers. That was me figuring out what shade I wanted and how I wanted to get there. So it's, it's four colors mixed together and I really like the shadow that it gave me. I also went back in and added more of the forest glades to my green mix to make it a little bit darker and I'm blending that out now as well. So once we finished that, I pulled out a whole bunch of the espresso color to deepen up those shadows, I thought that the flowers just needed a little bit more depth in the darkest points of them. So I took the little bit of pink that was left on there and mixed a bunch of the espresso brown in with it. And we're just repeating our same process over and over again. So I hope everybody has been doing awesome. Um, I've been really working on videos and content for you guys and trying to get back into the swing of things. I'm I'm feeling really inspired again and I'm really enjoying making cards, which was something that I was lacking for a little while. So it's really nice to be back and being happy with what I'm putting out there instead of just kind of feeling like I'm half-assing it. So that's super fun and exciting. 
And yeah, if there's anything you guys want to see more of or anything like that, definitely leave them in the comments section down below. I read all the comments. I reply to quite a few of you guys. I just, I really appreciate the interaction on the channel as the channel's been growing slowly because I haven't been making enough videos. So I added some of that brown into the green here as well, just to make that one a little darker. I wanted them to kind of be on the same level as the others. And then we're going to work on our centers. And I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no idea. Oh, nope. Look, I'm darkening it up again. I still didn't like how dark it was. So I put one more layer in apparently. I guess I forgot about that. So I didn't know what I wanted to do for the centers when we get there. I was like, um, do I make them pink? Do I make them bright yellow? I didn't know what to do. And I, so I, I faked it till I made it. I was like, the flower centers are yellow. So you're going to see here in a moment, I'm going to put a bunch of yellow in the middle of all of those flowers. <laughs> I'm be like, hmm, now what? Now what am I going to do? Because I had no idea. Nope, I'm going to darken up the leaves first. See, look at how far ahead of myself I'm getting. I need to slow down. Slow your roll, Jesse. I also need to remind myself to talk slower while I'm doing voiceovers because lots of people think I speak too fast and I apologize for that. So we're going to put in a bunch of yellow into the centers of our flowers here. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of that espresso brown in with it and start washing that right around the very center of it. So there's like a little bulbous thing in the middle and then it's got like stamens that go out so I'm ignoring the little actual flower center and I'm just putting that on the stamens and then I'm going to take just some of the brown and put little lines in this is jet black and I'm going to do that for the little like the those little balls on the tips of the stamens I'm just going to add a bunch of little dots in with the jet black paint and then I'm also going to do that with some white gouache just to give me some really bright um, highlights in the center of those flowers. Nothing overkill. I didn't go in and put too many, but just enough to give it a little bit of a pop of white on those centers, just to brighten them up and make them not look like a dark hole. Super happy with how this turned out. I love this. Um, now what am I doing? Oh, I'm going to paint. When I stamped this, um, the leaves, the solid color leaves didn't turn out too solid. So I'm just taking the straight espresso brown and I'm painting over top of them. And I'm going to paint over all of them just so that they look good. Then look, cut them all out by hand real fast. Real fast, you guys, real fast. Now I'm taking another piece of the watercolor paper. This one is three inches by seven inches. Nope, three by six. Nope, three by seven. Three by seven. And I'm just going to freehand some stripes on it. So I'm going to do some wide stripes and then I'm going to turn the brush on its point like on its the other direction and do some narrow stripes sometime here sometime here I'll do some narrow stripes there we go now I'm gonna do some narrow stripes they're not perfectly straight they're not perfect that's what I wanted I didn't want perfect stripes now I'm pulling out some more of that color not easy to mix <laughs> I always get disappointed in myself when I don't mix enough the first time so I'm adding a bunch more pink to that yellow just to make it on the same tone as what I had on the paper before. Adding some more water to that to make it a little more runny and light. And just going to carry on with making random stripes, thin ones, thick ones, different spaces apart. There was really no rhyme or reason to it. I just kinda put a bunch of lines on the paper here. And then that's going to be left to dry. And now I have a circle that I die cut out of the same watercolor paper so it is slightly larger than three inches because it does just go just above and just below which is what I wanted so I'm adding some pink just splats onto it and I mix that pink in with the brown just to give it a little more vintagey feel now I'm going to wrap it around the outside and slowly fade it out just with some clean clear water into the center of that circle and then I decided it needed a little bit more I wasn't quite happy with it yet so I come back in with some green and I'm going to splat some green on it. I definitely wanted to use the same colors that I used in the flower or in the, yeah, in the flowers and leaves just so that everything was um, very uniform. Now I have my corner chomper that I haven't used in forever. And I rounded the bottom corners of this long top folding card, centering that on it. Now we're going to pop up our circle. I have to move it up a little bit here. Pop our circle up on our card base. Now I got a bunch of gold thread that I'm going to mess around with. I end up mucking with this thread forever. I fought with this. I haven't done this 
on a card in such a long time. I couldn't remember how to make it stick where I wanted it to. Then we're just going to work on placing our flowers and our leaf clusters. And then I glue them all together. Um, what I do is I just pull the top one off and put glue on it and stick it to the bottom one and build it that way. And then um, I glue it on to, I glued the leaves directly onto the circle and now I'm going to glue that whole panel of flowers on. I use this congratulations sentiment from the same stamp set and we're gluing that underneath and putting a pop dot under it so that it holds it in place. And then we're going to add a few white and brown enamel dots that I had in my collection just to add a little bit more detail to the background of the card here. And that's it for this one, guys. I haven't done a card like this in a very long time. So if you